recognizing the leader of the third party. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm delighted to stand today and speak to Bill 8, the Finance Statutes Amendment Act. And I, just sort of following on the comments from the member I just heard, I think that it would be really important to recognize that there's a great deal of common ground in the legislature uh, across all three parties when it comes to understanding how essential it is that money laundering is addressed in British Columbia. And also I would say that how essential it is that we ensure that housing is used for people to live in in this province. And I think that if we were to spend more time focusing on what we agree on, Mr. Speaker, we might actually be able to deliver the best policies and the best legislation for the people of British Columbia. Bill 8 creates a single regulator for real estate in British Columbia, uh, bringing the responsibilities of the Real Estate Council of British Columbia and the Office of the Superintendent of Real Estate together under the BC Financial Services Authority. Government announced that they would do this in 2019, and it follows from a recommendation from the Real Estate Regulatory Structure Review in 2018, known as the Maloney Report. I want to just look at some of the conclusions of the Maloney Report, because I think it's important to put it into context what this bill is trying to address and the extent of the money laundering problem uh, in British Columbia. The conclusions of the Maloney Report include that money laundering significantly damages our society and causes ongoing harm, and that it facilitates other criminal activities contributing in particular to drug trafficking and the violent crime and opioid deaths that result in British Columbia. And I think that this is another thing that it's incumbent on us to do in our work here is to recognize that uh, initiatives and policies and legislations are connected to a multitude of real-world problems that people are living with right now, and that in our efforts to solve these problems, let's, let's always pull ourselves back up to that place of being in service to the people of British Columbia, and how do we most effectively solve these problems. Another conclusion of the Maloney Report, the amount of money laundering is significant, but it's difficult to measure. Uh, they estimate conservatively that in 2018 it was 7.4 billion in British Columbia. One of the reasons why it's difficult to measure the extent of money laundering, and this is something that we've been talking about a great deal this week, is the lack of data. Uh, the conclusion number four from the Maloney report is, uh, is that the analysis that they did demonstrates the need for data collection, combination, and sharing improvements to distinguish between legitimate and money laundering real estate activity. The Maloney Report also indicates, and this is where we get to with Bill A today, that regulatory responses to money laundering are best practice anti-money laundering measures. So having regulations in place, having a regulatory body, having clear uh, ex expectations, and then uh, enforcement is going to be essential if we're going to uh, effectively address money laundering in British Columbia. One of the other conclusions of the Maloney Report, and this is going to take me to a, another report on, money, on, uh, on what we're doing here in British Columbia, is that BC's proposed beneficial ownership registry for land is a major step forward. So British Columbia has brought in uh, a public registry to combat money laundering, the beneficial registry. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there's still quite a bit of work to be done on that. And I'm hoping that in conjunction with bringing in a single regulator for real estate, we're also going to see uh, improvements to the beneficial registry that was brought in. Uh, there's a, a report from the C.D. Howe Institute on BC's public registry to combat money laundering, broken on arrival. Uh, and this report indicates some of the significant problems that we have with the registry. Uh, 
There's no system in this registry for proactive verification or the identity of the true beneficial owner in real estate is one of the problems. So the, the registry might not be able to provide us with who the ultimate owner is as opposed to just the person's name on the land title. Uh, the registry has restrictions on keyword search tools, limiting the ability to connect beneficial owners with money laundering criminals. The registry has no confidential tip line associated with it. Uh, it doesn't have sanctions that include prison time. And so the, the costs of being sanctioned under the registry can just be seen as the cost of doing business because money laundering is indeed a very, very big business, Mr. Speaker. Also that the information on the registry will be, quote, unreliable, difficult to access, and difficult to, difficult to process. And, quote, even if it helps a searcher spot a falsely declared beneficial owner, the ability to communicate that discovery to law enforcement officials and their ability to leverage it to catch criminals will be curtailed. And finally, what the C.D. Howe report indicates as the biggest flaw with the registry is that there's no requirement for registry officials to independently verify identification information filed on registry, as in, you don't need to produce ID. So, uh, if we go back to Bill 8, uh, I think what we want to be very aware of is that as we take steps in British Columbia to address money laundering, which is a significant problem connected to, uh, you know, unaffordable housing prices, connected to the opioid and overdose crisis that we're facing, connected to uh, a lack of revenues that should be flowing to governments because of money that is being moved without access to uh, governments being able to identify it, let's ensure that if there are issues that are raised, if there are flaws, that, we, the, that government is very proactive in addressing those flaws because it's essential, uh, Honorable Speaker, that as we proceed with trying to fix these very serious problems in British Columbia, that we're not creating ongoing loopholes ongoing weaknesses in our efforts uh, to address them. And so uh, with that, I will uh, indicate we are going to support this bill. I think this is a good step, but I also think that there is uh, a significant distance for us to go in British Columbia before we've actually truly solved the money laundering problem that we have in our province. Thank you.